going to be learning, so I, I don't know that much about the subject area you're very familiar with, so bear with my ignorance. Okay? Please. But welcome very much to Manhattan Network. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, my great good pleasure. I enjoyed that night the other night over at the center at the UN. That was an interesting night. So did I. <laughs> okay, very good. And welcome. Welcome very much to our conversations. <coughs> it's my pleasure <coughs> to welcome to the program Adashir Omani, and he is the founder of the American Iranian Friendship Committee. That's correct. He's also chairman of an organization, Stop the War on Iran campaign. And if you needed any clue to that, he's got a badge on him that says Hands Off Iran, which has some sort of a clue to what we might be talking about. And welcome very, very much to conversation. Thank Great you, pleasure. sir. I wonder if you might share, as I said to you before, where I, I just you have a template I use with these conversations, but could you share your own background, where you were born and raised, some of your education, and then we'll get into a discussion of why it's necessary to have a committee uh, called Stop the War on Iran campaign. But I, your was own born, I was born in Abadan. It's a city in the southern part of Iran, mm -hmm. and that is the place where the oil refinery is. Mm -hmm. And in 1950s, that was the biggest oil refinery in the world. Really? Uh-huh. Refinery? And uh -huh. Yes. And my father worked in that refinery for 35 years. I see. I was born to a working class family. Mm -hmm. I received my elementary and high school education in that city of Abadan. Then uh, the Iranian oil uh, company, mm -hmm. National Iranian Oil Company, had uh, operated a college, engineering college, in the city of Abadan. I see. And I took the exams, mm -hmm. and between uh, a few thousand people, I was ranked seven from the top. Good for you. All yeah, right. so I studied for two years. I studied engineering and draftsmanship, and uh, finally I got a job in the oil refinery, working in the inspection engineering department I of see. the depart uh, of the refinery and your studies had been in engineering did engineering you say? beginning with engineering uh -huh, uh -huh. and uh, had I your father been involved in engineering or no was sir he, he was uh, he, what uh, he was uh, what we called in English pipe fitter pipe fitter okay. yeah right. meaning uh, he was uh, working on the on the pipes the oil pipes that brought the oil from the wells into the refinery and then exported abroad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, after a year or two, I decided uh, to continue my education and come to the United States. Okay, now if I may, uh, I don't want to pry, Please. but wh what year were you born? When w what were years were you going to this university and that sort of I thing? I was born in 1950 and 1939. 39. And 1959, I was, uh, I was in that university. At 20, yes. 20 years old. Yeah, approximately. You uh, also, your country had also gone through a period where you had had a Mossadegh. Oh, yeah, that is the... And you would have been in your early teens when he was uh, overthrown, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right? I, I, was, uh, I was a witness to the, uh, to the whole upheaval. Really? And, uh -huh. uh, yes, I'll uh, explain it to you. And uh, I came to the United States uh, to study physics, and I did study physics for a year or so, but I changed to poli uh, economics. W w when did you, where did you study here? In Let here, me. I began in Queens College. Later on, I transferred to Uppsala College in New Jersey. I see. Uh -huh. And I got my bachelor's degree in, uh, in economics, and uh, in 1960, I went to the New School for Social Research oh, yeah. on Fifth oh. Avenue and 14th Street, and right. I got my master's degree in political economy in and politi planning. In political, political economy. And planning. That used to be called political economy back in the 19th, 20th century, and it's still probably good to try and link the two, don't you think? That is true. That is true. Now, That's one of correct. the things I'd like to know is, is it the economics that predicts or inform? Uh, uh, is, is it the economic theory that informs the politics, or is it the politics that informs the economic theorizing, by which the, the planet is The basis of all politics uh -huh. is economics. Thank you. I think that also. I think that's really basic, and they get all kinds of ideological things they try to put at the base. 
But really, when you come down to it, it's usually always having to do with uh, a famous man said that man has to eat first, mm. then we'll think about politics. We also had a famous American, Tip O'Neill. He was yes, in our Congress, I and he remember. said all politics is local. Uh -huh. I always used to say all politics is economic, because the economics is what really informs it to a large degree. And what caused you to move from engineering or to that or physics to uh, economics and finally to political economics? It's very interesting. In, when I was attending uh, Obdon Institute of Technology mm -hmm. uh, in 1961, the teachers in Tehran went on a strike. All right. Uh -huh. And a few students in my class, they came over and said, Mr. Omani, you're somewhat popular in this city. You're a good student. Mm -hmm. Everyone respects you. Mm -hmm. we, do n we don't come from this city. We come from other cities. Yes. We are scared to distribute these leaflets that we received about the uh, strikes, uh, teachers' uh, strikes in Tehran. And the leaflets were in favor of the strikes? In or favor of the strikes. Oh. And they Kay. gave it to me, and I distributed those leaflets tomorrow morning and, you and I went to the classrooms even uh -huh. and I put on every desk I put a leaflet but I got arrested three days later. You did get arrested. You That's were in a right. condition, uh, uh, the country was in a situation where if you distributed a thing in favor of teachers striking you were liable to be arrested? During the Shah, after uh -huh. the coup d'etat of 1953. They had something called Savak? That's uh, correct. That uh. was the secret police trained by the United States government and they were also taught how to torture. Uh -oh. So I, uh, the police came to the classroom, as a matter of were fact. Were you teaching or you were a student? I was a student, and Dr. Smith was our teachers in, uh, in uh, analytic geometry. Yeah. And he came over and said, Mr. Romani, you will come there is us. a policeman oh, uh -huh. and a plainclothes man in a military jeep. Uh -huh. Have you killed anyone? Uh -huh. I said, no, I haven't. Mm -hmm. You know me. Mm -hmm. Can I put my books together? He said, no, you're not coming back. I said, what? My Lord. Who are these people? Mm -hmm. When I walked out, they pushed me into the back of the jeep. They covered my eyes mm -hmm. and they drove away. And I did not know where they are going. How they are horrible. inside the city or outside. Where are they? Are they going to uh, the precincts or they're going some other places? Now, is that, could you help, because you're, you're Iranian, uh, the, the event of the overthrow, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the United States and the CIA was involved in overthrowing Mossadegh. And I think he was, if I understand, popular. And is it an important event in the recent history of Iran in terms of the consciousness of the Iranian people who have that very closely in mind, uh, that event uh, of 1953 or 54 when it was? A horrible image is ingrained in the minds of every patriotic Iranian. What about some what, of the people who might have supported uh, Shah, who was put in place by the United States? Are there not some there of that nature? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. In 1953, at the beginning of the century, 1901. Okay. 1901, a man with the name Mr. Darcy, mm -hmm. an Australian with a British citizenship, came wow. to Iran and received the concession on Iranian oil. The entire country became hi part of his concession. In other words, he could drill any place he wants. That would have been pretty United. That's mm. right. That company that he formed at that time was, he came as an individual. Mm -hmm. Today, that company is called British Petroleum, BP. Mm. You said 1905? 1901. 1901, That's even. correct. Not 1905, 1901. 1901. Did they know that there were vast resources of oil then or not? The British I mean, knew. They knew? Yeah. And From they preliminary geologic research and so on? Yes, they uh -huh. knew. And they said Iran is entitled to 20,000, annually 20,000 pounds. And that's all Iran got for the tremendous amount of oil that the British uh, Empire uh, exported all around the world. You don't think the Iranian people should have been satisfied with 20,000 pounds? 
You don't think of that would happen? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a joke. I figured out, joke, I figured yeah. out yeah. years later uh -huh. that they were buying a barrel of oil for seven cents. Seven cents. That's yeah. right. They wanted it at six. Cheaper. Yeah, right. Yeah. Than, than a barrel of water right. that we, we purchased. Right. And then In 1953, yeah. 51, Dr. Uh -huh. Mossadegh, uh -huh. who was a son of an uh, aristocrat, mm -hmm. big landlords, mm -hmm. but with a nationalist sentiment, he realized that the contract after 50 years will expire. Mm -hmm. And by 52 and 53, the 50-year contract is over. And the contract was made in uh, 50, 2000, I mean, uh, 1901, 1901, 1901 till 1951. 1951. By 51, the contract was over. And what happened? So Dr. Mossadegh was saying, now we need a new contract yeah, with a new pricing. Uh -huh. The British didn't like it. Didn't like that. The British called, uh, called Washington. Mm -hmm. That Dr. Mossadegh, mm -hmm. who was elected democratically, Okay. He was a nationalist, yeah. he was not a socialist, mm -hmm. and he was not a communist. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, probably he was anti-communist, mm -hmm. but he had to be overthrown because the British uh, Petroleum uh, decided that Mossadegh has to go. One reason that they, they wanted to change the entire government and the administration of Mossadegh was that during that period, I do remember, I was 13, 14 years yeah, old. Right. And I saw that nationalist parties, socialist parties, working class unions were propping up all over the country. Mm -hmm. People's participation in politics and discussions of going to classes, learning, and even my father started learning English at uh -huh, that time. Uh -huh. In other words, we were coming into the 20th century, very pleased to learn, very pleased to participate democratically. This, the British Empire and the United States saw as a danger. All oh, right. Yeah. We were developing, believe me, democracy. Uh -huh. And democracy the United States and the British were threatened by. Uh -huh, uh -huh. In 1953, the United States and the British threw a coup d'etat mm -hmm. overnight. Now, when was Mr. Mossadegh elected? Mossadegh was elected 1951. In 51, just yeah. as the uh, Mr. Dorsey's uh, scam <laughs> yes. was being overthrown yeah, right. Right by history. Yeah, okay, and no. so yeah. Eisenhower decided that, uh, that Mossadegh has to go. After the overthrow of Mossadegh... What was it? Did they try to label him communist? Because we were yeah, in containment, the, the we had George Kennan, I do remember we that had Sento, mm. we had all these kind of things going on then. Yes. You know, was that Yeah, I do remember. That? The two the party, which was the Communist Party of Iran, uh -huh. had gained ground after okay. the Second World War uh -huh. with the victory of the Soviets uh, against the Nazi uh, uh, regime of uh -huh. Germany. Uh -huh. And that had created a favorable condition for the rise of the working class in Iran. Mm -hmm. For the first time, workers, 45,000 of them in the oil, uh, oil industry, they were organized. Okay. And they demanded water, drinking water for the houses. How they outlandish! Yes, <laughs> they demanded electricity. No. Oh yes. I can't believe it. And they demanded roads, roads. and buses oh. to go to work. You give them an inch, they want a mile. And the schools they wanted. The schools, yeah. No, no, yeah. I mean, so the yeah. British did Outlandish not want. Demands, yes. yes. The yes. British uh -huh. oil company did not want to provide drinking water uh -huh. or electricity or roads, mm -hmm. your, or houses, mm -hmm. or uh, schools. We demanded schools. Mm. The children and the workers of that refinery, I do remember, they were marching on the streets demanding schools. Our children need schools. It's the truth. If you give them an inch, they'll demand a mile. They just <laughs> cannot understand That's that what it's important <laughs> that those profits, we had another yacht to build for the people that owned it. And so, yeah, that kind of thing is that, 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 and, the, the, and, and that's an important mark, mm -hmm. Irv, in the history, in the modern history of Iran. Yes. You know, and it resonates very strongly. Mm -hmm. And also, you were coming into the modern world, 
but you were also coming out of a tremendously long, rich history that sometimes is forgotten by some of the Europeans and so forth. You had a rich history that went way, way, way back. And in fact, we were just chatting uh, Zoroastrianism, yes. the first monotheistic, very likely, and you had this Mithra, mm -hmm. who was a figure that, based, that was the basis of monotheistic culture, predated Yes. Predated Judaism. Judaism. And right. it was a, a culture that goes back so far. And you had Mithra. They had they had a temple in Rome, pre-Constantine Rome, that had been attended by many of the military leaders, and they worshipped Mithra, which was a uh, a, uh, a a Persian uh, based entity of a religious figure, mm -hmm. and that that rich tradition goes way way back. And I think that counts for something. Also, don't you? If yes. We're discussing this Iran? four months ago, I visited Iran. You did, yes. We got after, film, yeah. After 25 years mm -hmm. outside the country. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the cities of Shiraz and Esfahan, mm -hmm. and you see the tomb of Hafez 700 years ago, yes. Mm -hmm. The beautiful poetry that Hafez and Sadi uh, composed, yeah. uh, you see the depth of the Iranian history and culture. Absolutely. And it was a link between it was a link between Indus Valley and Greece in ancient times. And China. And China. Yes. Even the Silk Road yes. came through there. Yeah. It's the got Silk a rich history. That's the point really that is very often overlooked. Yes. And should not be. We should recognize that. And, and beautiful people. Beautiful I found people. them very kind. Mm -hmm. I found them very respectful. Well, had you you had left and you'd come here to study, and then had you kept your ties with people, family, and so forth in Iran? Did you keep you kept track of what was going on? I'm sure. Did you have a chance to go back in those intervening years or so after? You I was going to tell you that mm -hmm. those three days that the secret police uh, oh yes tortured yes, me. Yes, they did torture you. Yes, they made me political. I realized I was pleading with them that I am the second rank. Mm -hmm. in the engineering department of college mm -hmm. and my averages are high in the 90s yeah and please have mercy on me they, they were torturing it. you physically physically torturing and asking who gave you those leaflets the leaflets what are the sources of teachers. this leaflets? yes what are the sources who what is the root and the source the original source of uh, produ this, uh, that produced this leaflet, this and I did teaching. not want to give it to them. Right. I knew that if I say one word, those kids who gave me the leaflets, they will be in trouble more than I was. Then after I told them, yeah. please, you are torturing a cousin of the mayor of the city, of this city that we live in. Mm. Later on, he became uh, he became a, uh, a governor of that state. Right. After the, I was going back again to the coup of 1953. Mm -hmm. After the coup of 1953, no one could talk to his brother, or sister, or mother about politics. Uh -huh. My brother was older than me mm -hmm. when I attended college started going to college said brother do not talk politics to anyone mm -hmm. and if you met some people talking politics run away mm -hmm. go and do other things we shut our mouth for quarter of a century really that's right it was dreadful Mm -hmm. to say politics because you could you could not trust your brother he might be a secret police. Mm -hmm. So, when I came there to the United... There must have been seething below the surface, even at a personal level, a great deal of discontent against that regime. There was. The peacock throne or something? Peacock was throne. Was that what it was called? Or yeah, he yeah, was sitting in a peacock throne. Right. And yeah. there was an arrogance of power. Oh, And yeah. it was backed by the United States. And we thought he was something... rep. He was represented as modernizing in a way that Iranian world, that kind of thing. That was the image that we were trying to You know, to when I came project. to the United States and I saw running water in every building, mm -hmm. I was wishing the Shah would do the same for Iran. Mm -hmm. When I drove in the south in Texas and I saw the beautiful roads, smooth roads that you can dr uh, drive in, mm -hmm. and I was wishing 
I hope the Shah one day builds that kind of roads in Iran. He was not investing in infrastructure and building up the capital base and allowing the country to modernize. No, he was busy he stealing $24 billion, uh -huh. uh, the wealth of Iran, and bringing it to New York uh -huh. and uh -huh. Paris. Okay, I wonder if we can get back to you. Back yes. in New York, you came, mm -hmm. you studied. What, what caused you to go into political economy? Very good. Oh. At the New School on 14th Street and yes. 5th Avenue. When I came to the airport uh -huh. in 1963, June of 1963, the person who came to pick me up from the airport, a friend, mm. I said, are you sure we are in a right continent? Uh -huh. He said, why? I said, the embassy of the United States never showed in Iran that there are black people living in this country. <laughs> right. And I see there are black people here moving around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it, yeah. are we really in a, cr a right country? Yeah. In a right continent? He said, yes. The second thing I asked him, if there is an Iranian student association that fights against the Shah. Oh, wow. Okay. He got scared. Yeah. He said, Mr. Omani. He was Iranian? He was Iranian. Yeah. He said, Mr. Omani, I heard you were in trouble in Iran. Mm -hmm. Had you been talking up in Iran prior to your leaving to come here? Or was it so that you were not able to voice any of that? I was quiet. Yeah. I was quiet. Okay, but so simmering. Simmering hatred. Uh, yes. I hatred. think that's representative of a lot of people of the world who yes. are told to accept the situation the way the world is being run, but realize that it's not in a way that serves their interests or their people's interests. I think that's characteristic of a great number of people in this world now, don't you? Yes. Okay. The majority of people at that time were poor in Iran. Mm -hmm. We didn't have, as I explained, drinking water, electricity, roads, phones, uh, nothing exa mm -hmm. uh, existed. The Shah and, and the family, uh, they, were, uh, they were gathering a lot of wealth. I would say, summarize the whole thing, Iranian people have suffered a lot at the hands of the United States okay. administrations. Do you think the w people of the world have suffered at a great deal at the hands of the United States? Of when America? I look at Iraq and Afghanistan today, yeah. My heart is bleeding. Uh -huh. do, you remember, I, do you remember Vietnam? I do remember all those years from 1963. I participated in the first demonstration against the war in 1963 in Wall Street. God bless you. The one that was early. That the was one early. that Ho Chi Minh in uh -huh. one of his speeches referred to. Uh -huh. And he thanked the people of the, uh, of the United States uh -huh. for opposing such a criminal war. That was very early. Good for you to very do early. it. It held yes. on until, you know, as you know, you know the history of when it. I, when that day I got arrested in New York City. Good for you. The policeman asked me, who are you? Uh -huh. What are you doing here? I said, I'm a student. Uh -huh. He said, how long have you been here? I said, just a couple of months. <laughs> he said, you come to this country to demonstrate against the war? Hit the ground running, is it? I said, yes. if, I, if I was in Paris, I would have done the same thing. Uh -huh. They did. They, well, I, uh, 63 is early. Because 65, they were still saying we're bringing peace and justice and everything, that sort of thing. <laughs> and they always do say that they never say we're there to exploit people Yes. in our uh, aggressive attitudes. It's just to, to bring uh, progress. So you got into political economy, and then you studied. Did you get come down in terms of understanding? Uh, uh, are you Marxist inclined, or what were you studying? Because that's a thing that, or did you take, is that? I had a dream. All right. <laughs> like Mr. King. Huh? That's Mr. King. Uh -huh. I had a dream that one day we will topple the Shah's regime uh -huh. mm -hmm. and establish a society where there would be equality between the stratos of society and classes. And I would put my education into practice and serve the country with political economy, okay. meaning certain planning, planning for the country. That's right. You had planning. You plan. You That's correct. Planning. It was political yeah. economy and planning. Uh, and at a level of economic theory, were you a Marxist? Are you a Marxist? Do you think Marxian analysis is an interesting one or one relevant to organizing the world? I was interested in Marxism very much. Okay. Okay. And uh, studying political economy, of course, it requires in the new school learning 
capital uh, 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 volume one, volume two, and volume three. Samuelson? Uh, no, sir. Karl Marx. Oh, Karl Marx. I see. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. 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 And. Uh, and I was also uh, very inclined to teach other people. Mm -hmm. I formed study groups uh, teaching political economy and politics uh, to other students and Iranians. Mm -hmm. We formed a student organization which was, which was widespread in many countries around the world, mm -hmm. in Germany, in uh, France, in Canada, in India even, mm -hmm. Iranian students. We did not give uh, a breeding chance to the Shah whenever he came outside the country. Uh -huh. We demonstrated against him. And uh, at one point, the Iranian people in 1979, 78, decided to overthrow the Shah. Well, they did, and Mr. Khomeini, I think he had been in France for a while, and then he came and they made a revolution and took American hostages for 400 odd days and made a revolution, and you were in support of that revolution? I was. You were in support of On February of, of 1979. How did he treat the communists or the Marxists that there were in... Uh, in Iran. Or you mean Khomeini? Yeah. Uh -huh. the, the, At the, the very beginning. Let's say the Iranian Revolution, which is still celebrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the very beginning, uh, the situation is very complex. Yeah, of course. Always. All is. forces were trying to position themselves within the new uh, government or new situation, the hierarchy of power. After he came to power. After he came to was power. Was it a surprise to you that he came to power? Or it was a surprise to it me. Was it surprise. was a surprise to me because all other stratos and classes were also involved in organizing and contributing to the force of overthrow of the Shah. Mm -hmm. And when he came to power, decidedly controlling uh, uh, all the annals of power in the government, yeah. it was somewhat, uh, somewhat uh, surprising to me. I was uh, standing, sometimes I stood on the corner of the street and I saw one million man yeah. is behind him. Amazing. Yeah. I cannot, I cannot blame him for it. Uh -huh. Yes, we talked about the working class, but the working class did not follow us. Uh, he was not a Marxist. He was not. Of course, he was not. Okay. He's a uh, devout Muslim. Uh, one of the characteristics of the leadership of Shia, at least, yes, in please. Iran, uh -huh. has been to protect the sovereignty and the integrity of the country. Okay. And this was reflected also in the revolution of 1905. Okay. There was a constitutional revolution in 1905. After Mr. Dorsey. That's correct. Hmm. And in that <coughs> revolution, you see the participation of the patriotic and democratic religious forces in that in religious that forces yes yeah. religious in uh, uh, and non-religious forces in in, in 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 you brought it up uh, in iran uh, you had zoroastrianism and so but you had uh shia and Su yes. is thought of as a shia country yes and maybe you could talk to that yes there is 90 Sunni or, yeah. yeah 90 percent of iranians are shia okay why within I'm not an expert oh, okay. in that area, right. but within Islam, there were two branches developed very early. Sunni and Shia. Huh? Sunni and Shia. Yeah. Shia uh, was the ideas or the set of ideas uh, propagated by Imam Ali. Ali, Iranians followed Imam Ali. And thought he should be the descendants of he should be the caliph. Or he should be the caliph of the uh, of the Arab Empire. Uh, or the uh, Islamic. Okay. Islamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Islamic Empire. Islamic's larger than Arab, but yeah, okay. That's yeah, correct. Right, right. And uh, Iranians chose that branch of Islam 
as a cover of protection, please, to some extent, uh -huh. against the majority Sunni. The Sunni were the majority. Have they've always been majority. Always been uh, they are uh, in the majority. And there seems to be great sectarian. Uh, animosity there and it's a little hard for us to understand maybe you could help clarify what's the source of the deep animosity between the Shia and the Sunni and I understand it has to be it's very complex mm. but why the, the what's the big is it like Protestant Catholic the US media uh -huh. makes too much okay out of this animosity okay we did not feel it inside in in Iran uh -huh. and even whenever we came into contact with the uh, with the Sunnis in Iraq. Today, there is a lot of propaganda by the media mm -hmm. emanating from the administration and Washington that the conflict in the Middle East is between the Shia and Sunni. They seem to be killing that each other. That is not true. You know, what is that all is that? not true. What is all that sectarian violence that's going on in Iraq now? I was reading the statistics of the number of attacks made in, in last month, mm -hmm. and I saw, according to the to the media, seventy percent of the attacks were made against the American forces. Oh, twenty percent was made against the puppet government of Baghdad. That's ninety. Only a few percent was waged against against. Uh, civilians. Thank you. That's if, very interesting. If for that me is to statistic, is so I, I accurate. keep track of things, and I had not realized <laughs> that. Yeah, if that is statistics is correct. I, and you saw this where? And let me tell you where about. Where you see the statistic? I mean, in the newspaper. I mean, the Times or was it? Is is it? Is that correct? Oh, it is. It is available. <coughs> I can make okay. it available right. to you. Ninety percent is directed either against the government of the United States. Or th they're running dogs. Or they're running dogs. Uh -huh. A few, a, a few percentages, Vichy, Vichy probably dogs. nine, t uh, ten percent of it, is uh, is against. Sadar. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, against uh, civilians. Uh, and or it is that that's the Sunni Shia thing, the Sunni Shia, the Sunni or Shia, Shia. Uh, animosity. And it is we not get so much, uh, we hear so much that that's what it was. It is not really true because Sadr. Mm -hmm. uh, army uh -huh. fights against the occupying forces. And Sustani, Sustani, uh, uh, Sadr. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what about Sustani? Sustani, of course, gets along with uh, with the government, and uh, would like. Uh, I don't think uh, he has a fighting force. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But not getting into the details yeah, right. of okay. things. Yeah. Uh, when I was a child, mm -hmm. on our block, there was a Christian family on one corner. Right. There was an Arab Shia on the other side. Huh? There was a Turkish family on our left. And there was another family, Jewish family, on the other corner. Must have been a couple Armenians thrown in. Oh, Armenians yeah. were there. <laughs> yeah, right. Well-educated Armenians yeah, right. were there. Yeah. And we all got along together right. fine. Whenever my mother made bread, mm -hmm. we all shared it with other families. Was it good? Was it good bread? Oh, beautiful yeah. bread. Don't make bread. Warm like and hot. Yeah, I know. Right out of the oven is great. We yeah. had no problems yeah. with yeah. the Jewish population. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, in the school that I attended in Abadan, there was a student to my right and he needed some help with his physics and chemistry. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, and I didn't mind. Tutor. I didn't care whether he's, uh, he's Jewish or Christian or Buddhist. That's the way it should be. As long as he needed help, I yeah, gave him yeah, help. Yeah, learn the and equation. Yeah. So we had no problem mm -hmm. living together All for right. centuries. Mm -hmm. The Jewish population lived in Iran for 2,000 years. Right. And there was no such an animosity that existed in Europe against the Jewish population. Mm -hmm. And today, we welcome the Jewish <coughs> population of Iran to live in prosperity and happiness. Are there many Jewish in, in Iran? There, are, there were 
I mean, were, a sizable number? There were 200,000, but after the creation of Israel, some of them thought that they can have, have a better life in Israel, mm -hmm. and they migrated to Israel. So there are not very and, uh, many. Not, uh, there are 20,000 Jewish okay, living, okay. and they have their own representative in the parliament of Iran. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Their, their faith is respected in Islam. Islam respects of all the book. religions. They're of the book. Both yes. Shia and Sunni are of the book, yes. right? So right. they're in that tradition. Sure. And that book, yes. it's really interesting to me that that book is really based on Mithra, yes. which was a Persian yes. person that preceded Judaism mm -hmm. itself. Yes. So, I mean, that's a, that's a thing. That's we respect board. all faith and religions. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, we have tolerance uh, in, in Iran. Uh, Zoroastrian have uh, their representatives. Yeah, they're dying out now, though, the I think. Zoroastrian is being assimilated. There's w New York the Times today had a big issue about that. The Christians that. have their representative yeah. in the parliament. A lot of people say the Jewish are dying out. The Jewish are dying out because they're all marrying shikskas. They're, they're all marrying, uh, you know, non-Jews. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a great worry about that. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a big issue because of the state of Israel's political uh, significance in terms of the area where we're talking about, right? Yes. Uh, uh, I intend to say something about... Uh, yes, uh, we got we got to get to the modern situation because yes. there's great threats. Uh, your country is being uh, put in the uh, aim of the military. There's a big movement that would go and bomb Iran, which I guess you're aware of. Some of these neocons want to bomb Iran and uh, because of uh, the, the current administration and the, the atomic question of uh, enrichment of uranium and these kind of things. And we probably should get to that because, you know, the problem is, yes. Mr. Omani, is yes. you're too darn interesting. I could talk to you about your childhood for about 20 hours, but we got to get it up to the present, yes, right? That's so right. let's try to bring it up to present because we're here talking in uh, 2006, and what's the date? September sixth, right? Six. Something yes, sir. of two thousand and so um, you've got the committee, hands off Iran, you got your thing, uh, the committee to uh, stop the war and uh, bring it up to date a little bit. We've just come out of the incursion of the Israeli forces. Uh, we have the Israeli question there. We have the uh, in the the war that was fought in Lebanon. Uh, we have Nasrallah, who has emerged uh, in the minds of many, having been able to stand up to the invincible power, supposedly, of the Israelis, uh, lobbing 300 weapons into Haifa on the last day of the incursion. Much of the Arab world, as I understand it, feels that he is emerging as a hero to being able to stand up to the traditional power uh, of uh, Israel backed by the United States with unending military support and that uh, he's, a, he's emerging as a hero. I saw the, the Emir of Qatar say that he, they thought he was going to say that he should, his Hezbollah should be disarmed and so forth. And he came out and he said they've given a new uh, impetus to the sense of Arab uh, ability to question the invincibility of the Israeli-American presence there. And then now they're saying that that had been a, that, that incursion into uh, Lebanon was seen as a way to uh, abolish Hezbollah so that it could clear the way for an attack upon Syria and Iran. Uh, Cy Hirsch and others have said that they think that an attack is going to come against Iran because they have a nuclear program that the United Nations has said they shouldn't and they still have it. So this is part of the context against which you formed this committee uh, to stop the war in Iran. And uh, maybe you could set me straight where I'm wrong on Please. some of that uh, uh, that that uh, uh, summary of the current situation as you and I sit here and talk in September 2006. In 1970, mm -hmm. Iran joined, became a signatory to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Right. Mm -hmm. One of the first members of that treaty. During those years that the Shah was in power, the United States was the first country that constructed a nuclear plant in Iran and promoted and encouraged the Shah to expand the nuclear industry of Iran. Why not? 
nuclear power is a very important source of energy, is it not? Right. Mm -hmm. And isn't and it a na nation's right to develop nuclear power? France has about 40 percent of, I think, of its electricity comes from nuclear sources now, if I'm not mistaken. 70. Is it that percent. high? 72 percent? That's correct. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, uh, 72 percent of electricity in, uh, uh, in France uh, gets produced by the nuclear so energy high. plants. So that's high. correct. Okay. That's, and uh, that's still not a building small matter. more. Yeah, uh -huh. And uh -huh. uh, just a few days ago, George Bush, uh, President George Bush, said that uh, the United States should start building some nuclear plants. You know who plants. else has said that? Because you got a lot of people who object to nuclear energy because of the radiation that is thought of as like with bombs and stuff and everything. True. But you know who else is that? James Lovelock. Are you mm. aware of the guy, the, the fellow in England uh, who is such an eco uh, ecologist? Mm -hmm. He's saying we should do it. And you know who else wants to, is going to develop nuclear energy now? Is South Africa. Oh, it was yeah. in the Times yesterday. Exactly. They're going to develop it. And so they're going to be able to develop a energy source that is non-polluting and is a valuable kind of thing. And As a matter of Brazil also mm -hmm. announced a few days ago that they have started uh, uh, enriching uranium for the uh, for building and uh, and uh, constructing and expanding the nuclear technology in right. Brazil. It was it was it was put out because there was so much uh, against the Three Mile Island that kind of thing. There was an ecological challenge. But now you got one leading ecologist in the world, mm -hmm. James Lovelock, is saying we should develop atomic energy as a source of non-polluting source of energy. It's an important modern organization development that should be encouraged. Article 4. So why can't Iran uh, uh, go along that line, I would like to know. Uh -huh. The United States and Britain, it is my understanding yes. of the history of Iran. Mm -hmm. They have tried to keep Iran underdeveloped. Barefoot, pregnant, and in the kitchen. Yes, underdeveloped. Mm -hmm. That's All generally types. The, isn't that generally the way the Western colonial attitude toward? I think they called them the Wogs in the time of the British. They there was them a the time wogs. that even when the Shah the, was in power, uh -huh. and the Shah was a puppet of the United States, yeah. and everyone knows it. Yeah. And spent twenty-five billion dollars uh, uh, for purchasing arms, the most modern arms in the arsenal of the United States. Uh -huh. Even him when he asked for a steel mill uh -huh. from the United States right. and Europe. Uh -huh. They refused to sell him a steel mill. After going around and asking the Europeans and the Americans and the British, please, we need a steel mill to make steel pipes yes <laughs> and it's beams. called development and yeah. beams but there's no reason for you to develop you we've know, got they, steel they, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah. they refused yeah, until right. the shah finally went where he didn't want to go and that was Russia? to the soviet union yeah, right, right, and right. the soviet you union soviet sold union. Yeah, right. iran the the steel mill in Isfahan uh -huh. is the one that the soviets made in iran uh -huh. before that uh -huh. iran asked the West for railroads, something as simple as railroads. You see, you see, and that's trains. what I told you, Omani. I told you that they, they you give them drinking water, and the next thing you know, they want steel, and then they want, you know, electricity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they'll take them. They, they just refused. Don't understand. Yeah. So this is not the first because time it, because they might be able. There's a concept of dual use. Mm. So mm. if you could mm. use something, maybe mm. for mm. you know, they could become a threat to our power, we've got all the power, we can intimidate you with it, and if there's something, you can't develop, because if you develop, you might become a threat to us. That is the, it's at a the paranoia. root of the, that yeah. is at the root of the conflict. Okay. The conflict Good is between, mm -hmm. between the West, which has developed mm -hmm. technologically, mm -hmm. And wants to control militarily mm -hmm. and wants to control the rest of the world. Yeah, and they haven't got a very good model to do that because it's not serving very well about 80% of the world population. I the would United guess. States is not happy with the resistance that the Islamic government of Iran is putting up to this kind of hindrance. I think it's more than that. It's, uh, it, it's uh, yeah, right. That's a focus now, but it's also resistance that's emerging from the people of the world beyond maybe Iran and beyond even Islam or Arab. It's the people, you got things going on in Latin America. There is a resistance against the system and the assumed legitimacy that the United States of America and its running dog allies around the world, living in gated communities all over the world, 
serving themselves and not serving the mass of the people and the system in place will not be able to serve the mass of the people and the people are beginning to uh, 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 rumble. Secretary of State mm -hmm. Condoleezza Rice says mm -hmm. Iran is isolated. I have heard I think the United States is isolated in the view of the people of the world. I have heard this sentence from her yeah. for like hundred times. Or you hear the international community thinks. <laughs> it's really a, a handful of people that have this power, uh, like uh, like uh, aristocrats. This is one of our objections. Yeah, okay. That's why in the United Nations, uh -huh. the Security Council is made up of, uh, of uh, five countries. Veto and they have veto power yeah. against the rest of the rest of the world as a matter of fact let me mm. tell you mm -hmm. that british mm -hmm. and the french and the united states that do not compose contain 10 percent of the population of the world mm -hmm. decides for other 90 percent of the people of, on this earth well you used to have the aristos in feudal times in europe and they controlled everything everybody else wallowing around in the mud of poverty and so on, and just keep it that way because we want to have all the wealth. The wealth, I was talking with Sarah Flounders, who I think you know today, she confirmed for me that the disparity of wealth between the Aristos in 1789 France mm -hmm. and the disparity of wealth between the super wealthy in the United States of today. America, that it is greater, the disparity in the United States today, than it was in uh, 1789 France. That is true. 1% of the population in the United States controls 90% of the wealth. More than that. I'm going to tell you. Uh, it, it was, uh, Mr. I said it again, uh, mm -hmm. because it's staggering, Mr. Krugman said, mm -hmm. that the growth in the last three or four years or something, that it didn't go, the growth didn't go to just the upper 5%, 1%. It went not even to one-tenth of 1%. It went to one-hundredth of 1% is where all the growth went within the American economy. It's like the, arist uh, like the feudal the lords of the past, and w they've got all the assets, they got all the power, and we're all picking up leaves on their estate. It's like feudal. When I was in Iran and I told uh, some uh, Iranian friends mm. that 47 million in the United States do not enjoy health care. Health care. Yeah. They were amazed. Let them die. When I, when I interviewed, when uh, we interviewed a nurse in uh, Iran. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. she said that health care for poor families in Iran are free. Okay, yeah. We, I was amazed. One of the problems is you're too interesting, okay? That's your problem. You shouldn't be so interesting because I could talk to you for 25 hours. But you were recently in Iran, visited back in Iran, and you t you happened to get some footage there, video footage. Yes. And we want to sure we get that in. We got about 10, 15 minutes to go. So let's make oh. sure we get it. When were you in Iran? And maybe you could, as they say, set up this film clip. It's about six or seven minutes. Yes. Could you set it up for us and then we'll run that and let the people see what this Vox Populi kind of opinion this woman was. But sure. W when was it done? In uh, on uh, March of this year, we okay. went Reason. to Iran and we visited uh, the cities of Shiraz and Esfahan, and we uh, uh, we interviewed individuals on the street, uh -huh. uh, impromptu. Yep. And uh, they spoke, and we thought that they might be scared to to talk their minds but yeah. that wasn't true oh, yeah. they said we can say anything we are free good well let's hear the voice of one and let's see if we can set that up there we're talking with it's um artisan yes no. artisan is the sheer art of sheer omani and we're talking with he's the founder of the american friend Iranian friendship committee and stop the war on iran campaign let's run that piece of tape then it goes for about six minutes and uh if you run that now then uh, please thank you
What is your name? I'm Fatima. Fatima. Glad to meet you. I'm an Iranian girl and I uh, learned English in uh, one of the city of Iran. I say that uh, I'm as a girl of, uh, in, that lives in Iran. We, we are not terrorists. We, we support of peace. We love American. When we say down with USA, we don't mean down with America. We love uh, American. American are very intelligent, very kind. <laughs> Uh, such a good people in the world. Thank we you. mean that, um, unfortunately, I don't know, some uh, some uh, diplomats and some oh, policy that American has. Yes. You know, oh, for government. example, when when they uh, when America attacks to uh, Afghanistan yeah, or to another country, we protest this. You did. I saw you on television. I saw pictures of Iranians with candles. Yeah. I understood you want peace. Yes. For example, and, and also uh, about Israel. Iraq is about Israel. Oh, Israel. About, uh, oh, unfortunately, good. when when they attack to Palestine and kill a lot of people, yeah. and also only their their weapon is only a stone, we protest against this, yes. not against, for example, uh, the religion of yes, Jewish. Yes. What well, do you think about we, the nuclear we, we energy? Uh, nuclear, when it is uh, in the way of a, a friendly wars mm -hmm. for uh, for for development, you know. Yes. For, for science, it is, it nanotechnology. Is our right. Yes, for, for technology. Yes. This is our right. That's right. But uh, we, um, I, I emphasize this, that we don't want to use them to use them uh, nuclear power for, for example, for what? No, no, no. I we know. don't mean this. In the this United States, war. I tell many people that yes. are uh, don't understand that I know <laughs> that the American people. Um, they think because the, the television says that, you know, um, Ahmadinejad and Iran is a threat, a nuclear threat. But I tell them this is not true. Iran in its history has never attacked. Yes, no, has never. Never attacked. And then I say, who has dropped bombs on other people? My government has. It yes. is wrong what my government does. I protest what my government does. Especially our, our religion, I mean Islam, yes. is a religion that uh, emphasizes on peace. friendly matter in peace. We don't mean to, for example, uh, attack to other countries. No. I know, I know that. We, we love so another much. country, we love American. Thank and you, so I hope, uh, and uh, I mean that all humans are the same. We are the same as brother and sister, you know, God, God, God created all the people as the uh, same as each other. There, there is not any difference between us and, and American or uh, Afghani or African. Yes, or all, all the people are the same. The same as, for example, fingers of the hand. Yes. All people One are more the same. thing, George Bush uh, and people in New York say that you you, um, um, women of Iran are not free, and we no. must help you become free. What do you say no, to No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> a good, uh, such a good point you mentioned here. Uh, maybe because of this uh, scarf that we wear. No, no, this is, this is not something that uh, uh, against uh, our uh, fairy, fairy time, no. That's right. This is, this is uh, I mean, this is one of the signs of our fairy time. You know? <laughs> yes. I mean that Islam, our religion, emphasizes that uh, women has um, has to have, you know, this kind of uh, a scar. But we are free to, to do all the things. We are as same as men. There is not any difference between women and men in this country. All the people are the same. I know all of my relatives, my women relatives. They are working in city hall. They yes, work, I know. In, in all the fields, in every in, field, in, in the course of society, in uh, in everything. In a school, in universities, in uh, offices, in every, everywhere, we are free to do whatever we want. Good. There is not any limitation for it. So I have... I well, that's really interesting. What, it, 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 it's too much. We're almost right out of time. We've got a map. We want to let them see that this is the map. This is where so much of the attention of the world, maybe they'll be able to come in on it. And that just shows you where is Iran is at the center of all that. And Iran is a crucial country now. Iran and we have to, has maybe, if they could, million population. maybe if they could come in on the map. Uh, it would, go ahead, show it. Just point where it is. Iran and see if they has 72 come on million that. population. Uh -huh. And it's, it is three times as large as Iraq, mm -hmm. 
and the population also is three times uh, uh, the population of Iraq. Right. And also, we are neighboring many countries. Afghanistan, Pakistan, Pakistan. Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, <coughs> Armenistan, Iraq, and the Sheikhdom in the, in the south, and uh, other countries uh, uh, we are close Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Absolutely. In the last 200 years, we have not attacked any country in that region. Good for Therefore, you. George Bush cannot say that we are a threat to the region. Okay, we only have about a minute left or something. I thank you for this primer. We've got to do more in the future. Let's sure. just be the beginning of a friendship and so forth. Thank but, you. Um, there are these, uh, these uh, rumblings now that there are com they want to set it up as they did with Iraq. They want to set it up to bomb an attack. Iran. This is something that's blowing in the wind, as they say now. This but is a threat against which you've mobilized. They will try to impose sanctions, mm -hmm. the same as they did in, in Iraq. You don't think they're preparing to bomb, or maybe Israel bomb? At this bomb point, like no. They probably the they'll, they'll, uh, they'll uh, press sanctions uh, to make uh, other uh, members of the uh, United Nations Security Council to accept it. The Russians and Chinese are not for it. That's because right. That's that is, they know that is the road that the United States goes, it starts with sanctions and ends up in another war. So they, they made a big mess in Iraq. Let's hope they do not make a big mess in Iran. And we ought to keep uh, your committee in, in, in place to keep educating people so that we do not allow this country to be led astray as they've been led astray in Iraq and we other places. We need the help and the support of the progressives in the United States mm -hmm. uh, to stop this war mm -hmm. before it begins. Yeah. This would be the biggest, bloodiest war of the uh, 21st century, at the beginning of the 20th century. There are people it that want to institute a war, a clash of civilizations, Sa Samuel Huntington and Bernard Lewis and some of these people. Uh, a lot of it has to do, I think, with protecting uh, Israel in the minds of many, that you had a fight with Israel, Israel no longer is seen, and so they're being besieged, and that's another part of the overall context. The, po the former president of Iran, Khatami, is here, yes, and at the moment. he would like, Iran would like to negotiate mm -hmm. through dialogues, mm -hmm. solving the problems and not war. That's by all means the way to go. We ought to run the graphics and so forth here. The, uh, the, uh, the problem is we run out of time. Uh, and uh, it's so you. interesting, the whole story is so interesting, it's also so <laughs> crucial. I'm sorry I got off on so many things, but thank as I you. say, it's your fault for being so interesting. Thank you, sir. That's very nice of you. And I'm hoping that this is just the beginning. We've got to help you keep us in tune with this country and this development that's so important. I'll going be to back so anytime you so call on me. So it's really been a pleasure talking with you. Sorry it's so abbreviated, but it's a great pleasure. It's your pleasure to have had the perceptions then of, help me out now, it's Artisan. Artis, Artishir. Yes. Artishir Omani. Yes. And he is, again, the founder of the American-Iranian Friendship Committee, and he's also chairman of Stop the War on Iran campaign. And we've put up contact information. It's up on the screen now. And they'd be happy to be in touch with you and to help share you. They've got literature and so forth they can make available. Thank you for all that good work. And I appreciate you very much coming in. And just, let this just be the beginning of a series.